G'day and welcome to the Eloquent in the Room podcast, episode 10. Fuck yes, I am so excited. I didn't know where this podcast was going when I first started back in March at the beginning of COVID times. I just knew that I had a lot of stuff I wanted to get off my chest. I knew I wanted to get my activist on and my creative juices flowing and and just, I don't know, give this a crack. And now here we are, fucking 10 episodes down, and I'm into the end of my third little series, which I called Ixnay on the Ironery Bay, a four-part interview series about gender and sexuality. And this particular episode is such a cool note to end it all on. I can't wait to get stuck into it, so let's fucking do it. Episode 10, let's strap in or strap on, whatever the fuck. You do you, boo. Okay, here we are. It is part four of Ixnay on the Ironery Bay. I've called it What's in a Name? By the way... I'm Rose Cooper. When I was born, my mum called me Rosemary, and um, I've never been that partial to it. Most of my family have referred to me as Rose or Rosie if they're feeling particularly loving towards me. My friends, close friends, call me Rosie. Um, But yeah, my mum would yell at me and call me Rosemary. Um, And yeah, my teachers at school called me Rosemary, so I don't really have a really good association with Rosemary. I've always embraced Rose. And as I've gotten older and embraced my sexuality, I've also embraced the symbolism of the rose and its relation to uh, allusions to the female genitalia and just generally um, a beautiful symbol for many different things. So yeah, I'm Rose. Now my guest that I interviewed a week or so ago and recorded, um, his name is Quinn Carter and that's the name he was given 21 years ago. And uh, around about 11 years ago, he and my youngest son were really good friends in school. And at that time, Quinn was wearing a dress. Um, that's because he was assigned female at birth. Um, and I have also known Quinn through uh, the local theatre scene when I used to live in Gosford. As a matter of fact, about five years ago, I was lucky enough to have a fantastic opportunity to have a role in a musical called Ruthless, which takes the piss out of musicals. And Quinn was actually the musical director and his little sister was in the show. Um, So while we haven't exactly been really, really super close mates over the years, we've always had a nice rapport. So you will notice (laughs) that there is a very relaxed atmosphere in this interview. Um, And yeah, so we're exploring Quinn's journey, discovering that he was actually trans. And I got to say, being on the outside looking in and um, being in other shows with Quinn and um, uh, just noticing the changes as they were happening, noticing the different hairstyles and clothes and stuff he was adopting, um, I could see that changes were happening. I was figuring it was a perhaps a non-binary journey, but then a few years ago he started a, uh, a new identity on Facebook and Instagram known as Lucas. So I have primarily been referring to him as Luke, Luca, um, because I want to embrace this thing. But i got to say, as a mother of three, um, I quite often refer to my kids by their brother's names and my mum used to do it and I'm the youngest of six. She'd go through five of her daughter's names before she'd get to mine. Um, So yeah, this is about names. It's about journeys. Um, 
It's about tripping over pronouns. Uh, Quinn, Luca, was very happy that they were given a nondescript sort of um, neutral name at birth. And as he has been um, gaining a bit of a name in the music industry, um, he's keeping the name Quinn Carter. And it's my absolute pleasure to present um, a track of Quinn's at the end of this interview. So stick around because you're in for a massive treat when you hear this song. We do talk a little bit about um, theatrical stuff, but it is mostly about um, his trans journey. And we both get to be goofy in this one. So, um, yeah, I'll just let you have a listen and enjoy. And let's catch up at the end, shall we? Okay, then, let's start at the beginning. Do you remember a time when you started to feel different? Yeah, that was, oh, my Lord. I, ever since I was a kid, like, I've always, I just remember always really, really, really not liking the colour pink. Mm. I never wore dresses or skirts or anything of the like unless I was told to for performances. Um, And I did not want anything to do with makeup whatsoever. <laughs> like mm. I know that's like the whole like stereotypical, like female quote unquote things. Um, but I didn't want anything to do with it. I was, I was very much a tomboy growing up. Um, and I kind of, I kind of wish I'd discover, um, term trends sooner. Cause I, I didn't know, I had no idea what that was until high school. So. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I think it's only really been cl- more clearly defined. I remember when I was in my 20s and reading various magazines and stuff and became aware of just transvestitism being a common practice amongst mm-hmm. heterosexual cis men and that it was just a thing, a, a kink, a, a fetish. And at that time yeah. I didn't really know kick kinks and fetishes beyond I suppose less personalized things you know that that were just about just about that person's world you know Um, and also we have been fed I presume you've seen Disclosure the documentary not yet yeah I've I've heard about it and I've been told some things about it from friends who've watched it, but I haven't seen it yet myself. Yeah. Well, it it kind of highlights the fact that part of the problem with um, prejudice is that it's kind of like racism as well. It it was made fun of. It's not just that people were um, vilified and, and discriminated against, but it was made fun of for entertainment. Yeah, so you have absolutely. people in blackface for entertainment and then you had people cross-dressing on TV for entertainment. And now that transgender has been not only identified um, in the LGBT sort of realm, it's been classified as the umbrella similarly to bisexuality or bi. Yeah. Um, so you've got people who do cross-dress who can claim under the... Trans um, under the trans umbrella, yeah, because yeah. It, it it speaks to a, something that's personal to that person, and they yeah. identify as you know can be straight male, but I really like to dress up, and that's okay, you know, uh, yeah. and that's cool, <laughs> and and similar with non-binary. I spoke to my friend who has recently yeah. come out as non-binary, and oh, she's done. Them. She there we go. I slipped up straight away. <laughs> they. Yeah, so it's cool to laugh about, but you feel bad about it. You feel shitty about it because you know it can yeah. be hurtful to people. Um, oh, yeah, I've, yeah, I've been there. I, I still I still mess up sometimes with some of my some of my mates. I'm just like, she. Oh, sorry, they. Oh my god, move on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, it it, it, it yeah. just goes to show that it's never or hardly ever vindictive. It's it's people know when mm. people know when the people are doing it stubbornly, but yeah. usually it's just I. That's the way I know them. So so I know that they wouldn't have a problem with it. Um, but, yeah, the, the, they've done gender studies and to, hey, even, cool. to even contemplate that 40 years ago that, that, that as a subject would be a thing and, and the gender mm. studies wouldn't just be about two genders would yeah. not have been conceived of our imagination. So, so for you to not have heard of trans 
in your teen years is kind of your your parents probably would never have talked about it and yeah I mean like it's there's definitely a lot more awareness of it now than there was back then and I guess it's because like you know more people feel more comfortable because more people are getting educated about the entire um LGBT plus community um and I don't know like people educating themselves people educating each other which I find essential really to queer people's well-being but yeah there's uh, yeah I think there's definitely a lot more traction I guess now than there would have when I was growing up and in school like I, I didn't know really much anything I mean like going on going on to sexuality like I've, I've never really I'd never really heard of anything other than like you know gay bi um lesbian straight that was that was like it <laughs> when I was growing up like that was all I knew about um but I know that I know now that there was you know probably a lot more people who identified as you know pan omnisexual polysexual um etc demisexual ace um and s- same with gender like we no one really ever talked about anything besides you know cisgender or gender fluid um so in high in high school actually I'm kind of going off on a tangent I'm so sorry no that's fine um in high in high school actually when I was kind of like questioning everything um one of my really really good mates Dimmy he's also trans you know we were kind of like relying on each other so like we were doing research ourselves and mm. he brought up the term um by gender mm. so like someone who's by gender could identify as um one gender and another um it's not as fluid as gender fluid is gender fluid is more kind of fluctuating between um masculine feminine non-binary demigender whatever have you mm. um by gender is more kind of like solidified definite changes Mm. so I thought I thought I was bi-gender growing up and then he was just like oh look up transgender I think that's what we are (laughs) Mm. all right so I did some research into it and I'm like nah I'm not trans no way Mm. there's no way (laughs) and like about six months later I'm just like yeah I'm probably a guy (laughs) how 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 long ago was that like high school was it early high Um, school yeah early high school so like year eight late year eight early year nine um but yeah I started to really really question my gender around around puberty actually I was just kind of like you know people are changing different to how I am my friends are their voices are getting lower and mine's not what's up with that but I didn't really think all too much of it Mm. um but yeah like it was just kind of interesting finding out all these different terms and how many there were and Mm. I was like whoa like because it had opened up a whole new spectrum of things to not kind of experiment with but like well well I mean I guess like to just kind of discover and experiment with like these different terms and see if I can match up a turn to best suit myself as well Mm. so that's the beauty of um having the the fractions that's a word I've just come up with but it feels like there's, <laughs> there's decimal decimal points along this spectrum and oh, yeah. because we're now ide- identifying them giving them names and because it's human nature or projection or fear or whatever drives it other people are in a hurry to put us in mm. a particular box or to tell us what it is we're feeling what it is we're what the real thing is, or you know, whether it's a phase or any of these sort yeah. of things. But at the same time, if you were to come out, say, as a 16-year-old and say, I am trans man, people would be very quick to say, you can't make your mind up about that. You're too young. Oh, yeah. But. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, but, and that, to me, that should open the door for everyone to think for themselves, okay, but it doesn't mean I have to cling onto the other, the thing that makes Mm. me feel uncomfortable because everyone wants to try and push you backwards rather than pull you forwards and help you through it. Yeah. That if there's somewhere where along the way that you can be really comfortable as a young person and just say, I am feeling my way through this and I don't have to, plant my flag just yet and do 
do you feel like there was any pressure on you as a teenager, whether it was self-imposed or from other people? I think I'm this, so I have to declare yeah. it or, or, or push forward or, or, you know, get to that place. I mean, a little bit. Um, I only really, like, as I was kind of like, you know, figuring everything out, like, I only really got backlash to push me in the other direction. It's like, no, 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 no. You're female. You're a girl. You wear a skirt. And I'm like, that's, I don't feel comfortable with that mm. <laughs> at all. Um, and there was, oh, there was one time I, <laughs> this is in, oh, I think it was, I think it was year eight actually. Um, I'd been talking to mom and I, it, it was, it was about like 10 o'clock at night. We we're just about to go to bed. We just had dinner and I went into her room and I'm like, Hey mom, I'm going to ask you a question. She's like, yeah, yeah, sure. What's going on? Um, and I'm like, look, I'll be able to maybe get the, um, guys shorts for school so I can start wearing them instead of the skirt. Cause you know, I don't really, I, I don't feel feminine in the, in the least. Um, and like I had explained to her what by gender was. Um, but the first reaction I got back from her was no, 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 you're a girl, you're wearing the skirt. You only have one more year left until you're a senior and the shorts are going to change color. And I'm like, but black shorts like you're not hearing me out on this Mm. so she really struggled to kind of like I think came as a shock to her um and she's still kind of like struggling to I guess like kind of come to terms with like hi I'm not (laughs) I'm not your daughter anymore I'm your son Mm. like you haven't lost me I'm still here just I want to be in a different body that's all Mm. um so yeah that was that was kind of a hurdle Mm. um and it knocks me back a fair bit but yeah my mates at school were really I'm really really thankful for them and my partner as well like between my school friends and my partner like I don't think I'd be where I am without them which is pretty awesome actually now that I think about it yeah do you think so being in a creative like I'm biased I guess because I don't know any <laughs> I don't know any different but do you think being in a creative community where I feel that more people on the rainbow spectrum do congregate a, a, a creative mm. uh, creative people so that mm. that's that's the where the support comes from or everywhere as well I mean I don't know like because I'm like you, I don't know any different. Like yeah. I've been doing music since I was like three. So like that's a good 18 years. Um, but like, yeah, I've, I've definitely found that, you know, in theater and music and dance, there's definitely a lot more rainbow people there than mm. in, I don't know, academic studies or that, that I've noticed anyway. Like I might be completely wrong. Um, but yeah, like I think I think that's where a lot of the support does come from is within the theatrical community. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now it's people tend to be really superficial with their opinions as well. Like for instance, the phrase what a waste has always been uttered when mm. people find out that someone is gay. Like, the, yeah. the, you know, because they're the opposite sex and they're like, oh, what a waste that really good-looking person is out of, my, out of my reach. And I fucking hate it I hate as that. well. Oh, it, it, it drives me up the wall. Oh, my God. Like, I yeah. don't understand how someone can be that selfish to not consider someone else's own well-being and preferences. Like, Yeah. So huh? have, have, <laughs> have you ever encountered that from the point of view of, uh, becoming uh, a young man and and having anyone sort of because you're an empirically attractive human being that oh, I'm, I'm presuming no, but I'm presuming people would people would sort of say but but you're but you're beautiful yeah, yeah. you know has anybody ever said yeah. that to you see yeah, like I, yeah. <laughs> see it's not just me I know I'm sorry yeah yeah um, but yeah no like I, I've gotten like you know I'd post or rather mum would post a photo on Mm. Facebook of like, you know, the numerous performances I've done and a bunch of um, her friends or like, you know, just people that we've known for a while or um, people 
in the elder community of theater goers or whatever would be like, oh, you know, you're so beautiful or you're so pretty, good job, Quinn, good girl. And I'm like, um, <laughs> that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yes. you're, 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 um, you're very uh, active and that's uh, I'm so proud of you for that. Um, Thank you. And, uh, and your family, um I guess it's is is it up to them who's who's been sort of passing the information around to family, friends and whatever in regards to being mindful of how you're addressed and, and all that sort of stuff. How has that been approached? My friends have definitely stepped in for me because <laughs> mm. I'm too scared to do so myself. Yeah. Like I, I hate conflict and I hate correcting people, but I know it's something that I've got to do yeah. and I'm still working on that. But one of my mates in particular, you, you know her, Crystal Docker. I love her yeah. so much. Yeah. She's beautiful. She's, she's really been kind of, no, 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 no. It's he. And she'll mm. keep on like correcting people if they slip up, which I really appreciate. Yeah. I know that you're understanding of it, mm. but I'm sure there's also because you're still on your journey, I'm sure there's times when it does actually feel frustrating or give you a bit of anxiety or just to see that. Like it, how, yeah. how, how do you feel about moving forward and, you know, th- this bridge that you're on now with the whole you, you, you're transitioning, am I correct? Mm. Like it's sort yeah. of a journey that's going to take a while and... Yeah. And you you are a man, and how? I, I think this is a, a curious question that people might want yeah. to know. How do you feel about that chapter of your life, like the opening of one door and the closing of the other? Has it been a a, a case of that door's shut and I don't think about that person anymore? Like, how does mm. that sort of manifest I mean, like- for you? Um, I guess like in terms of like, you know, the whole crossing the bridge thing, I'm, I'm on a race car and I'm going 200 K over the bridge. Like I'm flying over it. I'm not looking back. <laughs> like yeah. I don't want anything to do with how I was. Cause I mean like that's, that's a different person to me now. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't look at myself at 15 and think I was, I was a girl. No, no, no. In, in my head I was, I was a boy, but like looking back at photos, I, um, presented very feminine because I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah, like I've been, <laughs> I've been really, really, really wanting to start tea for like the last six or seven years. And mm. I kept on getting, I keep on getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. Like I, I just wanted my voice to drop six years ago when everyone else did, you know? Mm. Um, so I don't know, for me, it's kind of like a full steam ahead. I want, <laughs> I wanted it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I know that like to do it right and to do it safely, to transition safely, like I've got to actually look at my options and take the time to explore different endocrinologists, different psychs, um, really, really do some in-depth research on HRT, which is what I've done. Mm. Um, and yeah, now it's just a matter of get the referral in, get everything sorted, start to <laughs> Yeah. So what, are you on any sort of suppressing sort of hormones? I don't know no. what. Yeah, I got you. So mm. there, there are, you can get hormone blockers. Mm. Um, so they're just little, I think they're tablets um, that you take, which just kind of balances out your hormones a little bit. So, um, you know, it's, it's usually, they're usually used in young trans people when they're going through puberty. Mm. Um, so like, you know, um, young girls or young female bodied people um, will take hormone blockers in case, you know, like if they, I'm really not doing this justice in explaining it. Uh, <laughs> You're doing a wonderful uh, job. I try my best. All right, hang on. I think I've got the words. So a young, a young trans man wanting, trans- wanting to transition but they're still going through puberty may take hormone blockers to stop estrogen and, proge- and progesterone mm. kind of, taking the dominant hormone in their body. Whereas a young trans woman, um, cause testosterone is the dominant hormone. Mm. Um, they may take hormone blockers to stop their testosterone, um, levels from skyrocketing as they do during puberty. Um, so it just kind of balances everything out. Um, so that's, that's one way. And then it's just from there, it's either, estrogen or testosterone for people looking to transition yeah yeah and that that 
I imagine that the thought of that when that starts happening is exciting. It's like you just oh yeah, you can't wait for you know start I'm so sprouting excited. sprouting hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, full fledged beard. In yeah, six months. yeah. No. Look, I just want I just want the periods to stop. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I think everybody <laughs> so everybody understands it. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and how's it how's it with your sis? She's good. She's getting there. <laughs> Bless her soul. Yeah, so I, her I imagine soul. it would be a really interesting thing for her oh, you yeah. guys being really close growing up and, and best buddies and all that sort of stuff. And and on one hand she I guess she'd be thinking that it's a, a, a cool experience to have yeah. to, to switch from sister to brother. It would be a yeah. cool thing, but at the same time, so. does she feel there's, that she's losing anything? Is she does she express anything t- to you? I'm not sure, to be honest. Like I haven't really had like an in depth conversation about her. It's uh, about it with her. It's just kind of been, yeah, it's this. All right, cool. <laughs> Which I yeah. think it's really kind of cool. Um, but yeah, like the one thing. Oh my lord, this is the one thing that made me really, really, really happy actually is like um, we both marched with Chipuka Productions in Mardi Gras early this year um, and I was singing one of the songs I'd written for a play um, that was done at Chipuka called Gabies. Yeah, I saw it um, on, t- on TV, on SBS. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yay! <laughs> mm. But yeah, so I was singing, I was singing Closet House and um, <laughs> the entire time I was singing apparently um, – because a bunch of my mates were marching with her, which is awesome. Um, cause they were back behind the float. She just kept on yelling, that's my brother. That's my brother. Wow. Like she texted me about it. And I'm like, oh. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry now. <laughs> I did cry. <laughs> that's, oh, man. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, the best. Like she's, that's... It's a little proud little nugget. And I'm like, oh. That's why what I, get, I this? That's why I feel that there's got to be some hope because we do Oh yeah. Um we do have to deal with a lot and particularly the trans community has to deal with a lot like the fact that we've got uh Black Lives Matter obviously being mm. headlined but just you know tiny yeah. little tiny like running in tandem with that is Black Trans Lives Matter and I didn't realize what a absolute abomination that is in the United States, particularly. I know I don't know what yeah. it's like in Australia, but the fact that there is that target um, it's it's of, terrifying of honestly. abuse happening. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely appalling. No human deserves to be treated like that. And the fact that that's that's a factor for people to treat people like that is absolutely disgusting. Mm. It it shouldn't it shouldn't happen. Well, but it's, but it I, does, and it's oh my god, it's 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 fucked up. I I the only do over I really wish that I could have had is studied psychology, um, mm. because there is so much that is true about like the Freudian sort of stuff about yeah. I don't know just just our first idea of who we are as human beings then we start modeling ourselves on our parents and it then it becomes this gender thing and then we we're either competitive with or curious about those around us and there's comparison there's competition there's jealousy there's all of this stuff yeah and then and then because humans are humans (laughs) and then someone's even slightly different Mm. and because we weren't taught anything about diversity in school. We just sort of see no diversity on TV growing up mm-hmm. and have, and I grew up in a neighbourhood that had zero diversity as well. It's very, very wasp. Um, yeah, agree. And, and then you, you do come across people that you've never met and you're curious about and then someone will tell you to hate them. Mm. You know, someone someone will have that sort of, uh, well, I've learned that that person is, whether it's to do with their nationality or or anything to do the with The way them. they identify. If they're a bit soft or a bit hard, whatever, yeah. you know. So we start being marginalised and, and being afraid and, and being all this sort of thing and we 
it's 2020 and we're really sophisticated and we can do ama- amazing things mm-hmm. with with money <laughs> and power and technology and stuff but just basic human decency is yeah. not is not necessarily everywhere yeah and how and is that even possible I know, I know. It's it still shocks me. Like, you know, people say, you know, like it's 2020, stop being racist, homophobic, transphobic, whatever the hell have you. Um, and people are still out there just like, no, I grew up like this. This is what I believe. I don't care if it marginalizes people or destroys their rights. This is what is right. This is what I think is right. And I'm like, no, that is not how the world works yeah um just be a decent fucking human being (laughs) so in my previous interview i spoke to m who's a trans woman who was born 40 years before you and um she copped a lot of abuse and violence and subsequently doesn't really come out that much only to chosen few people that she feels safe around um so what's it been like for you just to go out in public i've gotten looks uh, <laughs> a, lo- a lot of looks um that it's just kind of all background now it's like you know like if if i want to dress more masculinely one day and then more kind of androgynous non-binary another day i'm just like you know what screw it i'm human i don't have to deal with any of what they think um <laughs> oh there was <laughs> this makes me laugh actually <laughs> yeah i was playing i was playing um video games with my partner online and he has he usually plays um with a couple of people from canada which i find really awesome they're, they're lovely people i love them a lot um but yeah one of them because uh, like you know we we talk online and everything as well um he was just like, he was going on about like, you know, um, different, <laughs> just, you know, the normal things like, you know, different types of drugs and whatever. And like, you know, just, yeah, just, I wasn't really paying attention to be honest. I was just kind of focused, but like, yeah. um, <clears throat> yeah. And then he's like, wait, should we be talking about this around Luke? Like, how old are you? You're like 12. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm 21, mate. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. oh, okay. You, you sound really young. And in, in my head, I was just like, ah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and so like my first kind of response was, yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> I yeah. really don't though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just kind of caught me off guard. Cause I'm just like, wait, I don't think he actually knows that I'm trans at all Mm. um so i had to message my partner afterwards and be like hey can you please explain this to him for me thank you (laughs) um so yeah i don't don't know whether he did or not um Mm. but yeah that was that was like one of the things that kind of like caught me off guard a little bit um and like i find it funny to be honest i'm just like yeah that's about right like (laughs) like really um but yeah like i haven't really had anyone like approach me out of their way and like abuse me for it, which is, which I'm really, really thankful for. Like I'm really lucky that that hasn't happened to me. Mm. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying it won't either. Like there's probably going to be a time later on down the track where I do start tea and like I start growing facial hair and like all the changes happen. And, you know, I'm expecting people to, to poke fun at me and like laugh at me and just come up to me and just talk shit. And I'm like, you know what? That's fine, I guess. But like, what gain do you have from doing this is my question. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I'm, I'm prepared for it. I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm prepared for it. Mm. Um, and I don't think that there's a day where I don't think about that. Like I could, I could just be going for a walk down Gossip Waterfront and I could have some rando come up to me and just give me a weird look or like just start following me, trying to figure, figure me out. And I have gotten those looks before, like in Sydney as well. Like I, I was walking around and I could see kind of people out of the corner of their eyes trying to figure me out. Like, are, are you a boy or a girl? Or like, you know, what are you? Mm. Um, and like, if they had actually voiced that, I just would have said, I'm human fuck you <laughs> yeah. walks off. well that's um, the thing is while while you're on this journey you're experiencing who you are right now mm. and that ambiguity in and of itself is a valid 
place to be and it's a really sort of it's somewhere for you to uh might feel like an airlock chamber or, or something between states of being but at the same time it's a, a bit. it's an opportunity to break through your own whatever construct you have in your mm. mind as to what gender means oh yeah what it is so absolutely and I guess like the biggest thing at the moment as well is like you know like I don't have to figure this all out right now I literally have the rest of my life to do that and I'm I'm free I'm lucky enough to be free in my experience as a human being to be able to experiment with different kinds of things yeah um yeah and I'm really quite thankful for that actually like I'm really lucky so this is just an aside. It's at this point in the interview I mentioned to Luca that previously I'd spoken to Jess in episode seven, um, which was called Putting the Bi in Non-Binary, um, and we discussed how they had previously identified as lesbian, then came out several years later as bisexual when they took up with a um, male partner who was also bisexual um, and this opened up a really interesting discussion about how sexuality is influenced by that fluidity of gender that um, they do experience being non-binary in regards to having sex with a woman or with a man. Um, so I brought that up to Luca. Like mm. my my current partner identifies as male, like he's he's a guy. I love him to bits. Oh my Lord. He's brilliant. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like when, like if I'm with him, like I'm kind of like more, um, I don't want to say feminine cause I'm not, I'm more kind of like, I'm a, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of an airhead. <laughs> not going to lie. Like he, he really grounds me, but like I've noticed that, um, when I have dated, um, w- women before, like I've, I've been more of the grounding kind of character. Yeah. Um, so it it kind of it kind of changes and like it changes in the relationship Kenzie and I he's my current partner it can, changes in the relationship Kenzie and I have now as well like sometimes I'll be more of the grounding character like when when he's all doing his thing and up in the air and then but most of the time I'm I'm just a little crazy piece of shit that goes Whoa! and it's kind of like well I think I think flips between everything else I think because there's a a conscious ick factor. But the mm. subconscious in every relationship is you do take turns being parent-child. Yeah. You're, oh, yeah. You're, you're, adults, <laughs> you're adults together when you're best friends. But how many new lovers do you meet that don't talk to them each other in baby talk and don't oh, have yeah. pet names for each other? Everybody is trying to recreate that security and that safety in a relationship mm. with someone as human beings, we just want to feel secure. We just want to feel loved oh, exactly. and accepted and all that sort of stuff. So exactly that. Sub, subconsciously, it is always a parent thing. And I think what we as human beings, when we've tried to figure it out, we've said it's, um, it's male-female. Mm. And we've seen masculine as the father image yeah and and feminine as the mother image but we still ignore the fact that we are kind of taking turns parenting each other regardless of whether it's a masculine or a feminine trait does that make sense yeah (laughs) because I I feel like I've gone off on a mad tangent but (laughs) but. no you're absolutely fine that that makes sense actually now that I think about it like I, I think you're right like it doesn't matter whether it's a romantic or a platonic relationship anyway like you know like what one of my best friends like she's I love her a bit oh my lord um she's absolutely crazy um like she'll, she'll be there just like dancing and singing along to Disney and I'll be like all right come on let's get some food in you because you haven't eaten yet and I need you to eat <laughs> yeah and then other times like you know it'll just completely switch and I'll be off doing my thing and then we'll be like Quinn hurry up we need to get this done yeah <laughs> so like yeah it's it's like obvious in friendships and relationships alike like yeah yeah people parent each other in mm. different relationships actually now that now that you've said that I can see that and yeah, having no, been, thank you, thank you for pointing that out to me that's all right but and having been having grown up as a little girl it's nothing to do with your identity and everything to do with the way people treat you 
Mm. That in- oh, yeah, absolutely. That, in- that informs how you reach out for whatever it is that you need. Like girls apparently cry more than boys and boys, I don't know what boys do as little, like even though my boys, I can't remember, <laughs> they, they cried, they did things, I don't know. But I'm glad that helped something click in for you because in, in, yeah. your, li- in your life, you, I think you're always going to have an interesting headspace with partners mm. and, and it's, it's going to be about whether or not your um, gender feels compromised or not. But I guess we as human beings just have to realise that we do, regardless of how we identify, there's always going to be parts of both within everybody. It's Oh, absolutely. Mm. I mean, like, look, gender is a social construct. I'm a firm believer in that. Like, if we didn't have all the terms, I have a very strong feeling that any prejudices against anyone from the queer community would be eradicated. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, you know, humans would, people would just be people. And, you know, we wouldn't have any terms to discourage any anyone by. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's such a fluid, it, it's a fluctuation really. Like people, no, regardless of gender and sexuality, like we all experience the same kind of thing, but every person's different and we may lean more towards this side or we may, we may, we may be a mix of all of both, or we may be leaning towards more the right side or like, you know, but yeah, like everyone, everyone's on a spectrum, basically. Yeah, is and what I'm trying to say, and as well as the thing is, is it's hard enough to figure it out without yeah. having any noise going on in the background of of people. Oh yeah, <laughs> people either saying you can't make up your mind yet because dot dot dot, or please make up your mind, please, because of dot dot dot. Like everyone yep. always thinks too hard about how other people's gender or sexual identity affects mm. them. Yeah. So speaking just like, of... Just, just let them be. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of sexual yeah. identity, um, mm-hmm. your, do you feel that's, that's fluctuating as you, as you develop and move th- through your transition? Like you have identified as ace. Is that sort of... Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's, I mean... More yeah. demi, more demi now, or <laughs> so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like growing growing up, like I, I've always just kind of been more asexual than not. And, but like, I think now, because like I've been, I've been in a relationship. Brilliant. I've been, <laughs> I've been in a relationship for four years now, almost four years now. Four years next month, actually. Yeah. Holy crap, that went fast. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, I don't, I don't know, it's kind of like through, through that I've kind of, I've kind of figured out maybe I'm a bit more Demi than I was ace before. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, well, that, that's the thing is it's, I my the, the hobby horse that I have, mm-hmm. I, I, it, the only thing I have a strong opinion about that has no basis on any fact that I've read, just something that I came to my own conclusion um, and mm. that is that sex is an acquired taste. And the yeah. reason is I didn't, you know, as a young person, regardless of whether I was um, knowingly heterosexual or knowingly bisexual, just growing up, the idea of sex scared the shit out of me, excited oh, yeah. me, <laughs> and I was curious about it, but I had, no, con- but I had no context. Yeah, I didn't know like, how I was supposed to feel or 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 yeah. or just because I was a child, you know, you just you have no context mm. for it. Meanwhile, my mom lost no time poisoning my mind about my genitalia, um, about the male genitalia. She would often say disparaging things about my dad's body to us and about uh, her own body to us. So... There was a lot of internalized misogyny um, being sown within me from a very young age and um, still no context around sex. So I had to sort of learn to love my own body, learn to love the male body. Um, I couldn't say whether or not it was going to come naturally or not. And 
I'm like thinking, we aren't born thinking that. No, we're not. It's a learned behavior. Yeah, it is. It's learned behavior. And I know for a, for a fact that as I've gotten older, there was a time in my life in my 30s where I was very, very driven sexually and it was very, I guess, a hormonal drive and I was um, single after being in a relationship for 16 years and I was in my 30s and very fit. So I was like a kid in a candy shop. It was like a fun <laughs> experience after what felt like, I guess, holding back for a long time. And and I was an yeah, ugly, du- ugly duckling growing up and stuff and suddenly everybody was like, who's that? So, yeah, it was like I, I it was very ego-driven. Um, yeah, I got you. But now it's like... Um, I I have no sex drive unless yeah. I meet someone and I'm crushing on that person and then I would hump a pillow. You know, like I'm like I <laughs> I I you know, I, I'm on I'm on idle the whole time. It's like yeah. I need someone, I need be, but be the only reason that is is because I have the cell memory of mm. having relationship sex for 40 years of my life, like two relationships. I had relationship sex and relationship sex when you're in love is a whole other thing to just having sex because you're in the mood to have sex. Yeah, I got you. That's really interesting actually. Yeah, so I have an acquired taste. Yeah. For relationship sex. So even though I love sex and I'm famous for it, (laughs) um, (laughs) I still, I, my bar is really, really high. I'm like, I have to, I'm, I now actually am out as a demisexual. I actually have yeah, no, no, no urge anymore at all. I'm totally yeah. celibate now unless if I met someone that I really started to develop feelings for and then I would literally crawl over broken glass <laughs> to have sex with that yeah, person. Yeah, you. <laughs> For the sake of having sex with that person, yeah. so it is driven by got sex. You. So, so now you've you've got not only affection and love for someone, you've also learned your body has learned to respond in a certain way to that particular person. So it's a it's a cocktail yeah. of things that need to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that makes so. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting, actually. Yeah, because I mean, like, I'm I'm kind of demi in the sense that, like, you know, I also don't have a sex drive. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty sure, like, my my friends have more of a sex drive than I do by a butt ton. But like, um, yeah, like, I don't actually feel any urge at all like even even when I'm with my partner I'm just like yeah this is just can we just cuddle like yeah. <laughs> this is cool <laughs> yeah but like he he's the only person in in the world that like I would actually allow myself to feel anything like that for and like the only person who I actually do feel anything like that for mm. um yeah yeah is yeah. there a, is there a spiritual yeah. element to it for you like sex is How do you mean? more of a spirit like because of the uh, more of a mind thing more of an emotional thing but but definitely Got more you. of a an eye contact sort of a moment where you know you, you you're really immersed in not only that person but also the way your cells feel like they're connected to nature and the universe at the moment yeah. of, Got of, you. <laughs> of things you know um this in, is only the yeah. end of the moment. <laughs> yeah, this is this is only an audio podcast, but at the moment, um, Luca and I are gesturing <laughs> with with jazz hands that are sort of very all, ethereal all, all right it. now. Yes, I might, I might I might use this bit in the promo. <laughs> all, the, all the octopus hands, octopus yes. hands, and yes, talking all the, with all the. The pipe, pipe dancer balloon people that actually, you see at car lots. Uh, actually, I didn't. Yeah, exactly. I didn't really realize how much I ne- how much I needed to do that. I was in a bit of a. I was I feeling know. a bit messed this morning, but I'm like, right. I'll remember that. It's, I'll put that in there. Like, yeah. I, I do it all the time. My friends look at me like, "You absolute fucking weirdo! What the hell are you doing?" I'm like, I "Just let me be. I'm." I, I don't know what I'm doing, but like it's it's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Personal freedom is um, the best thing in the world, and <laughs> and freedom of expression and 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 Absolutely, stuff. So I, I, agree. I, 
I do my best to be okay with being a dickhead so that other people <laughs> think, oh, if she's a dickhead, then it must be okay for me to be a dickhead because, you know. There we yeah, go. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm the resident dickhead of my friend. I'm <laughs> an absolute fucking whack job. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> the amount of times I've embarrassed my friends. I'm like, you know, I'm not sorry. <laughs> yeah. You're stuck with me now. <laughs> yeah. So do you have any fantasies about um, anything you'd like to do once you once you've you transition like is there like do you ever have blokey fantasies about blokey things that you'd want that you want to do to be blokey uh, it's a really I mean, dumb question possibly no, i don't know yeah, absolutely uh, fine this is this yeah. kind of amazing actually because like the first thing that i thought of was like look as soon as i get a dick i'm just gonna go <laughs> <laughs> for those playing at home luca is now waving his imaginary penis around <laughs> like so it's the one thing I, I'm going to do. Like if if I ever decide to get bottom surgery, just like, hmm, cool. Yeah, <laughs> wave it around. Helicopter. Yes, helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to describe it because I just remembered, wait, this is an audio podcast, not anything visual, so I can't actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> yep, Luke is a dude, all right. Oh, all right. God. Yeah. But yeah, no, I don't, I don't yeah. know. I'm still I'm still on the fence about bottom surgery. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny actually because um, Kenzie's just like, would you would you ever get bottom surgery? And I'm like, hmm, here's the thing, pal. Let me show you exactly what goes on. So I got, I got a YouTube clip up that explained it in explicit detail. And by the end of it, he was just like, hmm, maybe hold off a bit for for a minute because like you're going to be in pain. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gonna hurt yeah um yeah I, I don't know if you know anything about what goes on in ftm bottom i haven't i haven't looked into it really really um closely i've i've got more of an idea of what happens in the reverse um mm. and that um that uh, orgasm is is still possible with trans women post-surgery and that goes to show that there is a lot more to um human orgasm than what we mm. think of it it's very vagus nerve driven which i've covered in my podcast yeah. it's it's very much to do with Yay. that <laughs> yeah that and so, and it's 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 a it's a full physical a thing i i just think the human body's capable of just about anything it wouldn't surprise me mm. at all what yeah. what what we're capable of yeah so there are there are actually two types of surgeries that someone can do um first one is I mean like they both revolve around skin grafts and everything so you can either take a skin graft from your forearm or somewhere along your upper thigh um but the one of the types of so I forgot what they're called my god but one of them is where they they'll actually um seal up the vagina and attach the prosthetic to the clitoris yeah. Um, and then they'll build a skin graft around that. So, like, you know, it's basically like, because, like, when you start tea, your clit basically elongates and becomes like a little micro penis in itself. Yeah. Um, so they'll graft it around that. So that can still be used as a sexual organ, which I find really, really fascinating. Mm. Um, but another another thing that, 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 blah, 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 that can happen <laughs> is um, they won't. Um, seal up the vagina at all they'll leave the clitoris as is but they'll actually attach it to um, like the front I can't oh my god anatomy is failing me at the moment um, like just above the labia like where the where the skin is yeah and like yeah the, the uh, yeah the mount of Venus or your your um, yeah. mons yeah yeah so like they'll actually attach it to that so some some trans guys may have a vagina and a penis which i mean like you know good on them if you want both and some Mm -hmm. trans guys may choose to stitch the vagina up and just get the um penis grafted around the clit Mm -hmm. um and some trans guys such as myself don't have bottom surgery and Mm -hmm. Sometimes we may not even want it, which is fine too. Yeah, so, yeah. It's yeah. There's a lot of ways to go around it. Yeah, and, and that's the cool thing about um, 
all of this is not only is the world catching up with the fact that sexuality is fluid, they're finally also catching up with sex itself is not Mm. just intercourse. It's not just one thing. And that, you know, our entire bodies are, are sexual and not just, you know, it's not just about procreation or or any of that sort of stuff. So mm. it's it's endlessly fascinating and, and complex. And um it's I'm so happy that we were able to have a really happy, upbeat conversation because I didn't mm. want to um, <laughs> I didn't want to think, oh, I'm just, I I just want it to be this way. I was hoping it really was going, you know, I I want it to be authentically, you have a positive story. Won't it be great when nobody has to come out? You can, you can can trade sexual business cards. You can actually sort of ask people, (laughs) ask people which, uh, where they're at or whatever, if you're not picking it up, you can talk Mm. to people about it and have that conversation, but won't it be great yeah. if if people don't have to keep continually yeah. coming out or coming out. Or, or explaining yeah the one thing that i hate doing that i keep on having to do is justify my own existence because mm. there are so many people out there it's just like you know <laughs> a lot a lot of people think i'm i'm just a butch lesbian and i mean like look th- thank you like that's flattering, <laughs> but like actually, mm. you are wrong. <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah. I'm a guy. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a boy, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like the yeah, I absolutely hate having to justify my existence, but I find myself having to do it every time the topic comes up. It's like, you know, like you know, I come out to a group of people, and they're just like, oh but what about this and this and this? Does that mean this and this and this? And I'm like, well, no, um, actually, you know, like we have sex the same way you guys do. We love people the same way you guys do. Like we're human just like you guys are. Like, there's no real difference other than what we know ourselves to be. That is it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I just hate having to actually like, you know, be like, actually, I'm human too. I deserve these rights as much as you guys do. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my biggest pet peeve at the moment. Mm. Well, you've got, it's, I'm just so glad you've got friends around you that are, fight me. <laughs> yeah, anybody... no, I, I am too. <laughs> like, yeah. And oh my like, God. and like you and you and Jack have been friends for years and I've, we've, we, yeah. we haven't talked about you per se, but when the subject uh, came up that I was doing this and all that sort of stuff. We were arguing about which which of your names was the correct one. I'm like, <laughs> he's Luca, oh all right. Goodness. And Jack's going, no, <laughs> he's Lucas. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> no, yeah. I love it. It's brilliant. Yeah, and we both wanted to be captain of knowing who what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. You're both correct. <laughs> Edit. I'm I'm gender flux, so like it's not so much gender flux isn't so much a gender in itself. It's more so describing it. So sometimes I'll feel very gender, so very masculine, and then other times I'll feel no gender, so like agender, non-binary, very androgynous, and it can happen anywhere in that spectrum. Um, you know, sometimes on my more masculine days, like I'll, you know, I'll dress much more masculinely than, you know, say. I I usually would I don't know that doesn't make sense in my head it probably doesn't make sense out loud as well but like you know I'll dress more masculinely but like um then there are times where I feel more kind of agender um non-binary what have you and I'll dress more androgynously but like in in doing so like a I kind of I kind of feel like fuck yes I'm vibing I'm, I'm doing my thing much as what, what I assume, um, like someone dressing up in a dress would feel like, you know, like there's a certain power element behind that and that I, that I quite enjoy. Um, cause I'm like, you know, I'm comfortable in my skin no matter, well, I mean, as much as I can be at the moment, but like, I'm, you know, comfortable dressing more androgynously and I'm comfortable dressing more masculinely. And like, there's a, there's, 
different different happy hormones for each you know yeah absolutely that's yeah. the the expression of people and the way they dress the way they look the way they do their hair it's all mm. very it's all very much part of it and it's not just part of your expression but very much part of a mood as well oh yeah and this is absolutely. I've, I've um I've been fortunate very 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 fortunate in that I have you know three cis male children who are okay at various times with um, dressing however however they want to. They borrow my clothes. They've, each of them are borrowed oh, good. at various times, like a jacket. That's awesome. It might be to wear a, a party or something, but I know that, mm. t- you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, a young male child would rather die than ask to borrow mum's apparel to, mm. to wear to whatever, whatever they're wearing, whether it's, you know. Yeah. Dress. And and I know that um, at least with two of them, it's part of their expression, the way they yeah. dress. It's at those times they enjoyed the the expression of it, of the way yeah, they Yeah, good on them. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's. That's awesome. That, that's, well, that's where we're going. It feels like that's that's where hum, humanity is is heading is mm. we hope anyway that how to overcome the the dominance of the straight white male default and allow mm-hmm. for all of this is a lot of it's going to depend on how well we can protect and um, hold up trans and non-binary people particularly are you um looking to get involved in um uh creative things not just for the sake of music but also um and and drama or whatever um particularly for uh the community for raising awareness for you know any projects that you Mm. you i mean like i've I mean, like, yeah, I've, I've been, I've been curious about it. Like I, I would have no idea where to start if it was just myself doing it, but I, I work very closely with Jupiter Productions mm. um, and oh my Lord, they're absolutely brilliant. Like Josh does an incredible job at making sure the space is safe for any queer youth, queer adults, people of color, um, and yeah, like we work really, really closely with the LGBT plus community um, mm. and the news community as well. It's just, you know, spreading awareness through through theatre yeah. like that. And I think that's really, really, really awesome mm. that yeah. he's doing that and that I'm able to be involved in it. Yeah. Oh, well, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully the, I don't know, the the curriculum will change and, you know, things are, things will happen. But in the meantime, keep, yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Keep shining your, your light on everywhere. <laughs> I can't tell you how, how wonderful it's been to talk to you. And I'm so great. I'm <laughs> oh, so great. I'm so grateful that you, um, if you have any discomfort, you're battling through it or, or pushing it to one side. You don't seem to have any discomfort yeah. at all, but you seem <laughs> you seem determined. You seem determined to just go. This is a good thing to have this conversation, and let's do it. So I'm yeah, I'm very happy and proud to know you. Thank oh, you. Bless your soul. <laughs> Aww. Bless your soul. You absolutely beautiful human being. <laughs> um, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just fuck everyone. Let us just let people just be who they are. So exactly, and, yeah. <laughs> and just take yeah. take that stick out of your butt and wave mm-hmm. your arms around like a car yard. Yeah, yeah, like the car yard balloon people. Yeah, car yard. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. It's brilliant. So you can see how my last interview with M and this one contrasted in completely opposite ways in regard to the public acceptance they both received throughout their lives due to the different eras in which they grew up. But the thing that they both had in common is both of them said they were really young 
when they realised they didn't feel comfortable in their body and in the clothes that they were being forced to wear. Now, since I've been going down this path in the last few weeks, I've been doing some research and I've also found some non-binary and trans support groups. And I contacted them to advertise that I was doing these podcasts because I really wanted to raise awareness and um, use this as a platform for that. Um, and I found that there are also parents of trans kids support groups, which was wonderful to see and um, to read the posts and see how much kindness and tolerance there is in these support groups for these parents. Um, and just to feel how much beautiful intention these parents have wanting to help guide their very young kids uh, along this path, a path that they themselves really don't understand. And sometimes these kids are really young, like they're not just, you know, 10, 11 or going through puberty when they come out to their parents. Some of them are as young as six, seven, eight years old, but they're growing up in an era of safety where they can actually start communicating their struggles from the beginning. And God damn it, that is exciting for the future, isn't it? It's all made me reflect so much about parenting, about my kids' childhoods, about childhood in general, and about my own childhood. But most of all, it's really made me reflect on gender roles and life choices and career choices that are guided by gender. We're not in the 1950s anymore, Toto. We all have choices to make in our lives to facilitate our authenticity. And thanks to the trans community, feminism is constantly being tacitly advocated for particularly when it comes to cis women feeling pigeonholed by the body assigned to them at birth. The colonisation of women's bodies is a deep dive for a future podcast. I'm not sure if I'll tackle it myself like I did with the orgasmic oddity or I'll find people to interview and bounce ideas around. I know it's a big one. <laughs> it's a very big topic. It's all about the patriarchy. Um, so feel free to reach out if you have an opinion about it or an opinion about who you think I should talk to about it because it's a beautifully, frustratingly, amazingly nuanced and complex topic and uh, there's a lot of unpacking to do, a lot of unlearning to do around the colonisation of women's bodies. Next time I'm moving on to a new topic but I won't be deviating completely away from sexuality and gender and sex and stuff um, but we're just going to talk more about self-esteem, self-worth, body image, sexualization uh, and consent. If you want to follow where I'm going with this and how I'm going to approach it, make sure you follow me on Instagram and or on Facebook and at theeloquentintheroom.com where I will keep you all informed about what's coming up next. Um, it's still germinating. <laughs> the seeds have been planted, but it's still germinating and uh, I'll know closer to a um, couple of weeks' time. But in the meantime... If you do identify as female, please find five minutes to go to my website, theeloquentintheroom.com, click on the links page and then click on my self-esteem survey. It is completely anonymous and only takes five minutes. I'm really excited to now to start digging deep into who we are underneath all our hang-ups and conditioning, courtesy of the patriarchy and capitalism. Fuck you! Um, but for now... I will leave you with this amazing track from Luca, a.k.a. the wonderful musician Quinn Carter. Make sure you look him up on Spotify. I've dropped a link into the show notes. Um, while you're at Spotify, check out the Eloquent in the Room playlist. Yes, I've dropped a link into the show notes for that. Every musical reference and every movie reference that I've made on every episode of this podcast is now catalogued on my very own Spotify playlist the eloquent in the room don't say i never do anything for you oh and by the way if you want to do something for me she says in her coquette voice by way of you know 
you want to help me out for all the hard work I've put into this podcast, slaving over a hot microphone, um, please share, rate, review, subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you listen to it on. Or if you have an iPhone, pop onto the little purple icon, Apple Podcasts, look up the eloquent in the room and just quickly throw in a a rating. This makes it easier to find. The more people that find it, the more that will listen to it, the more that will listen to it, the more that will gain from it. And ultimately, obviously, I do want to build up a following um, because that's what I'm here for. (laughs) I want to spread love, peace and harmony in the universe. I told you that. All right. Stop questioning me about it all. Um, Now, what else I've got going on is um, I've put out some merch and uh, it's sort of a, I'm tippy-toeing my way through the idea of getting some sort of patronage or sponsorship or monetizing the podcast. So I'm baby stepping my way through that and I've released some merch, some nice, good quality t-shirts, which I've put my own personal original designs on Um, and you can purchase those via bugsandfriends.com. Again, I'll drop a link in the show notes Um, and the profits from those t-shirts actually goes straight to me. Festivus is coming up, guys. So if you wanted to give the queer in your life who has everything an Ixnay on the Inery Bay t-shirt crop or a hoodie, even a tote bag. I will drop a link in the show notes. In the meantime, put your hands in the air like you just don't give a fuck and groove along to Queen Carter. Oh my God, this is amazing. I'll talk to you soon. People stare across the street. They don't know about me. People there, they see a freak. They refuse to learn anything Just make people bite their tongue Don't be scared cause we're still young And we're not afraid to be ourselves So just look them in the eye Give them a smile as you pass by Cause we're on top of the world We won't sit in silence We will not be quiet Closet house.